Entrepreneur's Podcast. But especially swimming. I find out if I do laps, just go back and forth, back and forth, and then just my mind doesn't that's, think that's about it. That's your yoga, else. bro. Yeah. That's how yoga shows up for you. Yeah, that's the thing I wanted to ask you about as well, like meditation and how many different ways people can meditate and what works for some people. And, you know, like, obviously now it's known that it's no one way or, you know, this is how you have to meditate, legs and pretzel and, you know. And um, I think I can even meditate when I do uh, speed riding on a mo motorbike. Is that is that possible? Can you it meditate? Like I mean, that? it depends on what your definition of meditation is, and it depends mm -hmm. on what you're trying to get out of it. Mm. So, meditation generally, you have a pathway and you have a goal with anything. You have a pathway and you have a goal. So, um, like traditionally, you'd have two different types of meditation. One is shamatha, which means tranquility, the other one is vipassana, which means insight. So, like understanding yourself. And those two aren't exclusive from each other, you, meaning you could do both at the same mm -hmm. time. And then also along that, there's a lot of different subsections off of that. But generally like how, um, and this is like the beginning levels of meditation because you could go deeper where you're really trying to find like the, the disillusion of self. Um, but let, let's keep it super easy on, on this yeah. one because you could go way deeper. Uh, basically the, the, the caveat to this is that there is more than what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. um, but two ty different types of meditation. One, I'm meditating because I'm trying to feel good. Mm -hmm. so this could be a bit, or, or whatever, like a visualization meditation, right? Brings me to a place of tranquility. Or I used to do a lot of visualization meditations when I was rock climbing. When I'd get into a really hard problem, I would go through every single move in my mind and just imagine myself doing it over and over and over till I committed it to memory. And you could call that meditation. Some people might not. You know, it's like meditation's kind of become this l looser word. Basically, when, when I really, when I think about meditation, I think about finding the tendencies of the mind. And from, from that, it, other things will arise. You know, one that you and your mind are not different. Mm -hmm. You know, like we often think like we're, there's a person behind the mind. There's someone behind the thoughts, watching those thoughts. And those two things are different, but we, those things are the same. Um, and which is a journey of under, like, first you have to understand what, what the mind is doing. Uh, and so the mind always wants to go it's to the most interesting. That's, that's yeah. generally like, you know, uh, so if you're sitting there and you hear something that's more, more interesting than than listening to the breath or focusing on the breath or if a thought comes up about your past or about your future or whatever, those are all more interesting than just focusing on the breath. And so you start to recognize, well, where does the mind want to wander and what does it want to go to? And, and that teaches you about yourself. And then it's, uh, the mind's like an animal. If you think about it, it's like a, if you've ever had a dog before, when you get a dog as a puppy, they're untrained. They just, pee wherever they want, poop mm. wherever they want. And so if you go to try to train that dog and you start yelling at it and scolding it and rubbing its face and it's, and it's yuck or whatever, then, um, that always works. Though. Yeah. Then there's that it's not, it's, that's not how you really train a dog. You take the dog outside, he goes to the bathroom outside. He goes, good boy, good boy. Oh, mm. that's a good boy. And then you, you reward it that way. It's like kind of the same thing with meditation. As your mind wanders, you notice that it wanders and you start to train it by rewarding it. Oh, I, my mind wandered. Good job. Like uh, I do counting. And so I, I inhale, exhale one or inhale, exhale two. Right. So counting the breath like this mm -hmm. and I'm just focusing on the breath and then something else comes, comes up and uh, I go, oh, that was a thought, that was a future, that was a story, that was the past or whatever. I label it as, as, that, as whatever it is, and I come back to the breath. And I'm always trying to get back to one. I'm never trying to get to 10. Because the goal isn't to make it to 10. The goal is to recognize the thoughts. Wow. And so once I recognize the thoughts, that tells me something about myself. What am I, you know, and then I, I, after my meditation, I usually don't think about it in my meditation because that's thoughts. And the goal is not necessarily not to think, but to recognize what you're thinking because the mind's always going to think. It's always looking for what's more interesting mm -hmm. than the breath. So I call that meditation. Some people, for them, it's more that, that shamatha. So maybe being out on, on a motorcycle or swimming or skydiving or whatever Walk, that... Whatever, <coughs> walking whatever, down the beach when people do in the yeah, mornings and stuff. Or running. <clears throat> 
so all those things bring you in a, a, a sense of tranquility mm-hmm. and that's but that's only going to bring you a sense of tranquility it's never going to give you anything more than that mm-hmm. not saying that that tranquility is not important of course it is we all need that we need to feel at peace we need to feel comfort but if you really want to grow from meditation it's a little it's a little bit more strict than that do you think everyone should try meditation are there people who don't need meditation? Are there people who are all they don't should should need? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's so subjective. I don't know if 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 you feel like you should or if you feel like you need to, then you probably should. And if you feel like you don't, then you're not ready, anyways. Mm. Or just as we talked before about opening your horizons and widening your horizons, learning more about your body and your soul and and your mind, and that could be one yeah. of those things. Yeah. I think once you, <clears throat> if you start with like a seated meditation practice and you spend time like going through and understanding the thoughts arise, then as you progress with that, it, your meditation doesn't need to be there only. Mm. It starts to become a part of your, like everything in your life because you've trained your mind that way. It's like, yeah. Um, yeah. So when your thoughts come up, when you're just doing other things, you recognize them coming up because you trained your mind. Mm-hmm. It's like having like having a well trained dog, you know, but also there 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 needs to always be a little bit of forgiveness with that. Like uh, my uh, when I had a dog, he was he was very good. I'd have him, you know, sit mm. and I'd pour his food in front of him, and he wouldn't eat until I told him it was okay to eat, or I told him stay. I could like go and do anything, and he would stay until um, until I gave him the command not to. But if I told him to stay, and he was sitting there, and then a squirrel ran by. Like his training only goes so far, mm. and the better trained you are, the, the less reactive you become. And I think that's a really important thing in life is to understand how to be react or to be active and not reactive. Not reactive, yeah. Reactivity is important to keep us safe. We need it, but almost in every situation, to be active is more important. And, and like mm. as a stunt mm. man, you know, mm. like you're you need to act. You're never reacting. Mm. Like you, you expect something to come. Mm. And when you see it coming, you make the action that keeps you safe. You know, it's like if I threw a ball at your face and you didn't know it was coming, you might like throw your hands up and mm. be like, Ew, you know, whatever. <laughs> and, and that that's would, what I, do. <laughs> that's, I, I know. Cause I've done this before with you and you're like, oh. <laughs> you know, that would be a reaction. But yeah. if you knew the ball was coming, then you would just, catch it like a normal person mm. though, which would mm. be an action but that's a lot of times like when we get into a situation um that it triggers us let's say emotionally triggers us makes us feel a certain way attacks who we are as a person attacks our identity or whatever if and then thoughts and anger and feelings come up and then so we become reactive mm. rather than you understand your mind you see those things come up and you go okay this is i'm feeling this way because this person triggered this, which came from my childhood, which has nothing to do with this person. Yeah. And so now instead of being like, oh, I'm a victim and I'm reacting or whatever, whatever it is, mm. it's like now it's like, I understand that. I recognize this. And then you could take action, which is almost always, if I would say always, more intelligent than mm-hmm. just reacting. So I think meditation really helps for that. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Bruno's Podcast.